Mailbag. I am Sarah Heck, joined by Antonio Harvey, down from Los Angeles via the MVP 100 video phone by InFocus, the new way to collaborate. How you doing, Tone? Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, napping out here in this wonderful <laughs> sunshine. Uh, yo, that's right, we're supposed to do a show. What happened, Sarah? Yeah, you know, I, we're just up here in Oregon enjoying the rain as the Trailblazers get ready for their final preseason game down tonight there in Los Angeles, which it seems like you're making the most of every moment. <laughs> Well, you know, when you when in when in Rome, do as the Romans do, or as they say, when in the sun, just enjoy it, I guess. Okay. Well, hopefully you can uh, put on some shades and uh, focus it up for the game because we have a few questions to answer for our fans. Uh, they're using, of course, the hashtag TV Mailbag on Twitter to answer their questions, and here we are to get to them. Are you ready? Oh yeah, let's go. Let's do it. All right, here we go. This first one from Jerry. He says, uh, "Hey Tone, I saw a poll that says that CP3 is the best point guard. How does Damian Lillard get to that level, or is it just a matter of time?" Well, I think it's a combination of both. It's just a matter of time. CP3 is undoubtedly the best point guard in the NBA. But I think Dane is one of those up-and-comers along with Steph Curry. Uh, then you look at it, at uh, Derrick Rose in Chicago. If he's healthy again, you know, there's, there's some contenders. The point guard position in the NBA is arguably the toughest position anyway. But then you add some great players to it like Russell Westbrook. And it, it's going to be a battle. But I think Dane has the skill set to, to be right there. He shoots it. He's aggressive. He's athletic. It's just a matter of, of growing and becoming more notable, and eventually he'll get to that point. Absolutely. You know, and another one of the questions actually has to do uh, with the combination of our guys on the court. This one comes from Taylor Reynolds, and he wants to know, can C.J. McCollum and Will Barton play on the court at the same time? Could that work with Nick Batum? What are your thoughts on some of the rotations that you've seen with the preseason and, of course, mixing and matching guys from the bench? Well, I absolutely think, first of all, that both of those guys can be on the court at the same time, and the reason is, well, neither one of them is a pure point guard. Both are pretty good ball handlers. Both are good at, at initiating their own offense, but both can also get their teammates involved. So while you might not get seven assists from either one, if the combination of the two can get you eight assists, let's say they average you know, each uh, nine points and four assists, that's 18 points and eight assists coming in off your bench. So uh, I think certainly you can play those two guys. And with Nick handling the ball being more of a primary ball handler, then that just makes it that much better because Nick is, a, is the best facilitator overall on the team. So, yes, those two guys, and not just with Nick, but with Wes or with Dane could all be on the court together. Absolutely. You know, and as we talk about the the just kind of expanse and really the depth and the growth of the Trailblazers bench, which has been a story of the preseason as well as guys kind of working back into shape. You know, it's been nice not having any kind of major preseason stories. But one other question that we have from a fan, Kim, she wants to know, what are your thoughts on the preseason so far? Does anybody stand out that really, uh, I mean, and catch, catch your eye on that? What are your thoughts? Well, I don't know if she means the NBA preseason <laughs> or the Trailblazers in particular, but I'm going to assume she's talking about the Trailblazers. Uh, Chris Kamen's ability to score the basketball is something we all knew about, but his, his, his presence on the defensive side, the block shots that we've seen, I think that's been the most surprising probably this preseason is that Chris has some defensive skills. He's got great awareness. He knows where to be, when to be there. I just don't think he's ever been called upon before to be that type of guy, and now he's getting that opportunity, and he's taking advantage of it. And, you know, to elaborate on that, do you think that he is the – is he the, the addition that's going to take the Trailblazers to the edge? Because a lot of people have been discussing this preseason about the Trailblazers making a jump to being an elite team. What is the key to that? Is it a guy off the bench like Chris Kamen, or is it continuing development of the bench in general? I think it's the bench in general, but Chris Kamen is a big part of that. Uh, Steve Blake coming in off the bench has a settling effect. So if you can put Steve – and Will and CJ on the court together, where Will is kind of an unknown and X factor. He's going to go out and do some wild and crazy things from time to time. You have Steve Blake on the opposite side. He's going to be very sabling, very calm. So they balance each other out. And then you throw CJ in the middle, who has the ability to score, but plays a more controlled game than, say, a Will Barton. But, but uh, less, he plays a more controlled game than Will Barton, but he's more. Uh, diverse and say a Steve Blake, more dynamic than a Steve Blake. So the three of those guys off the bench, along with Chris Kamen and whoever ends up getting those power four minutes, I think is going to be a, a good bench five. And I think we'll see the, the, the starters maybe even get more rest than they did last year. Yeah. And Tony, you know, as we wrap this, uh, this mailbag up for today, Trailblazers have their last preseason game tonight against the Clippers. What are your expectations tonight? I know it's going to be on NBA TV. And of course, you and Wheels will have the call on Fox Sports Radio 620. What are you looking for? No injuries. 
that's all that matters to me. That's the last game of the preseason. We've gotten this far without a turned ankle or anything like that. So knock on wood, the Blazers won't have any injuries tonight. They'll get through the preseason, win, through, win lose, or draw. This team is better than they were last year, and I think that it'll be a lot of fun to see them go out and execute in this last preseason game. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, sorry to take time out of your beautiful sunny day down there in California. We look forward to your call tonight. And as always, guys, with these mailbags, you can submit your questions for whoever our guest is using the hashtag TBMailbag on Twitter. We will see you next time. Thanks again for being here.